All right, welcome back. After releasing their debut album in 1984, they then come back in 1985 to unleash what possibly is their best album. This album is where they really started to kind of find their sound, uh, which of course I'm talking about Spectre Within. This album is where they really start to show more of their progressive side. Well, there was some of that progressive side that was, uh, you know, shown on their debut, Not Unbroken, but here they really start to show what uh, they would really would become. Because this album is half uh, Not Unbroken and half the next album, which would be Awaken the Guardian. Every a bit of this album has its progressive moments, but still is very, has that new wave of bridge heavy metal sound that was uh, presented on Not Unbroken, but it's done uh, more creatively, really. Uh, of course, uh, kicking off a Traveler in Time, which of course with the sounds of like, uh, you know, a clock ticking and winds, whatever, before breaking into its track, which is starts off slow, at times, but does end up picking up. This is where they really start to show a bit of their progressive side, alongside with Orphan Gypsy, which is another really good track on here. Um, of course, again, very progressive, even within riff changes after riff changes after riff changes. Uh, starting with one good riff, with one riff that definitely becomes biting, and then one that's just even more killer than the next. Uh, Without a Trace is another really good track on here. Every, um, very more melodic. It still has a bit of power metal sound as well presented on it. But still, another good one. Um, uh, even Pirates of the Underground. We definitely do have to talk about this. This is definitely one of the heaviest songs off the album. This song could have easily been on, like, Night on Brocken in a way. This is just a very galloping song as well where it just starts off with a very speed metal teens riff with Jim Mathews also just you know really uh, providing some really good guitar solos as well um, just a, more of that twin guitar attack uh, and I'm also forgetting to even mention that even Jim uh, you know John Ark excuse me is really providing a really good uh, vocal performance on here uh, really not skipping a beat uh, then let's get even to like the Apparition, another really good track on here. Starts off very slow and melodic before uh, breaking into another, you know, really good riff. Kyrie Elysian, um, which of course is like Greek for uh, something, I forgot uh, what it's for. So that's not the big point about this. This song starts off very... Uh, really almost kind of, um, I wouldn't say operatic, but it kind of starts off the same way as with, um, oh shit, um, you know what, let me just pull that album out. It's something very similar like Ozzy Osbourne, off like, uh, Bark at the Moon. Um, let me just let me pull it out for a bit. Um, do 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 Century of Eternity. Century of Eternity, something like that, where, you know how that song starts off where it's very, like, uh, almost eerie in a way? Is this the same thing how Cry Elysian, uh, you know, um, starts off? But this, but it just builds up to, a, you know, a very slow track at first before it just breaks into a very speedy riff. It's the most power metal song on this album, if you really have to say. It's like... This and Pirates of the Underground are probably the most real heavy tracks on here, but Kyrie Elysian just kind of uh, tops it in terms of speed. Every bit of this track is uh, very much a ruckus ride. Just another great track, and of course, it's showcasing John Ark's, uh, you know, vocal delivery. His, uh, you know, his range. But we do need to address the last track. Yes, we did. We make it this far. We made it. This is a track that we do need to. Uh, this is probably the biggest elephant on the album, and it's Epitaph. This track is, at, at this point, 
is Fate's Warning's most ambitious song. This is probably, and it's definitely the most proggiest song on this album. Kind of a next, like Traveler in Time or Orphan Gypsy or even like, uh, you know, The Apparition or something like that. But here, they just end up topping it. This whole album just builds up and builds and builds and builds to like a climatic ending for a movie. This is just a, a piece of art. This is a piece of art, this track. The, uh, this song is like the progressive uh, metal uh, counterpart to Satan's Fall by Merciful Fate. This is just a crown jewel of the album. Just the way they put together with this whole track, the way it starts soft, slow, but then it just ends up breaking into more melodic paces and everything about this track is so um, breathtaking. They really put a lot of work into it. it. This is where the ambition really paid off for the band. I really, it, it's, there really is no better way to end an album. This is like the most well put together Fate's Warning album at this point. Really, just topping Night on Brocken. While Night on Brocken I did enjoy, but here they really, it, it's such a fast progression. Very much similar to even Rush as well, since I kind of pointed that out in Night on Brocken, where how their debut album was very much kind of rooted, but it would be kind of safe for the next album, where they really show more of what they are made of. But the thing is, they didn't need to kind of change a member in order to kind of, uh, you know, show more of their writing skills. No, they didn't have a Neil Part because they already had a Neil Pert and Fate's Warning. And it really doesn't matter which one it is. Many of these guys were definitely, uh, you know, had something to prove. Just a great track to end a very good album. Um, just a solid album, really. Nothing can be said. Even the production is definitely an improvement over Night on Brocken. No longer it doesn't have some of that demo sounding at all. It definitely sounds very much well put together. Uh, and also, even another improvement is the artwork. Of course, reading off the back cover on here, um, Ionis. This guy, it, it, this is what, what they needed. They needed a really good artist uh, to make an artwork that really can kind of set the, you know, the mood, that can set the picture for this album. Something that, that really kind of tells of what type of album you're into. The album is pretty much the exact same thing as the artwork. Epic, just very... It, it, it's it's pretty much the artwork right here. That's all that needs to be said. Um, but again, Ionis, they really he, he really was what they needed. They needed a really good artist to make an artwork that really can be best provided for their album, for their music that can describe for what they are really made of. Overall, this is a tremendous album, one that does not really end up uh, tiring. Even uh, after each listen, and with e each time you even listen to it, there's always something a little different that you end up fighting within the album. Same thing that uh, it, it's kind of like this uh, with most progressive bands anyway, where each each listen gets better because if you end up finding more things that you uh, missed in the first round that you had heard the album. This is pretty much the same thing. Maybe even similar even with uh, Not A Broken at times, but here you really, there are just, every time you listen to it, you always find something new to really like about it. This is a great album. And I can't praise it enough. So, with that, um... What are your thoughts on this album? You definitely have heard it. So, post all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Now it's time to get to the next album. And you know which one that is. So, strap on. And I'll see you on the other side. It's time to go light speed.